What's up, it's your man Florida, and right now you're watching This Week in MLS. Florida! How about that for an intro? <laughs> I know, right? We're, we're like mainstream right he now. He was actually really good we're live. Basically. I'm not, I That show I was amazing! Lie. Yeah, he put on a great show. We were rocking energy. out! It was yeah. great. We it was had, fun. We had some fun. We were dancing low. We got the, uh, what's that song, the one he closed with? My House. My House, yeah. yeah. That was good. How it does was, it go? And I'm not, I'm, don't make me sing it, Kaylin. Sing it! No, Come on, you were doing not. so well that night. No, now I'm embarrassed. I'm camera uh, shy. I'm you're camera just shy. singing it no. off camera. Stop it. It was terrible. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna actually talk about some of our favorite moments from All Star Week later in the show but we're gonna we're gonna get right to the action right now and uh, we're gonna start right here in New York City where the top team in the East battled the number two team in the West and led by Frank Lampard's hat trick PS the first hat trick in NYCFC history uh, they ended the Rapids 15 match unbeaten streak with the 5-1 win Kaylin no David Villa, no problem for NYCFC. What kind of accent was that? That was David Villa. Oh. I was getting a little like... Oh, Espanol. Espanol. Okay, cool. Yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, no, he, the people were worried about how they would do without him. You know, he, he, they've leaned on him much of the season, mm -hmm. but Tommy McNamara, Jack Harrison have both been excellent on the side. Jack Harrison, the big difference. Give Tony Taylor me. some credit too. He gets his second goal of the season. And Frank Lampard now has scored eight goals since June. He, Who would have thought? He, he was can't booed stop his first goal. return in that New York Derby. Yep. Now he's being celebrated and deservedly so. His pairing with Jack Harrison has been great. Yep. And you can see um, Lampard now, he's starting to trust his body. When you come back from injury, it takes yeah. a little while to really get a rhythm, build your fitness. Now on that on his second goal of the day, he starts the attack on his own box, ends up going all the way down to the other end. Finishes it off great. He's excellent in the box. He's never going to lose that. But you can see him starting to trust his fitness, trust his body to, to really take a risk like that and get forward. All right, well, let's talk about the Rapids a little bit. Before this game, they had only conceded 14 goals all season. They give up five here. Is this is this cause for concern, or is just one of these games that was kind of inevitable, a sort of defensive relapse? Yeah, I think this one's kind of a throwaway, a bit of an aberration, only, only because Michael Azira got a red card in the 37th minute, I yeah. believe, so um, they had to play a man down for large stretches of the game. His second yellow was ill-advised, kind of a rash challenge. Jack Harrison, again, you yeah. see his influence. Um, on the break, you know he can do damage, so teams are really worried about that. Uh, Tim Howard was frustrated, throws his hands up. A couple uncharacteristic back passes that give away a goal there. Um, but I, I, they're not going to be the all-time, I think the all-time fewest goals now is 20 in a season. Mm -hmm. They're at 19. I don't think they were ever going to get there anyways, but it doesn't matter. Pablo Mastro, any of these guys, they're not looking to build stats or pat, you know, have as many all-stars as possible. They want to be there at the end of the season um, in MLS Cup, hopefully hosting it if, if for them because they want to be in that cold weather and the altitude. I still think they've got a good chance to do that. All right, well, plenty of moves off the field, too. Let's start with the trade of your friend, Giles Barnes, to the Whitecaps. Uh, the Whitecaps lost this weekend, but they're sitting just above the red line in the table. How can a guy like Barnes affect the team and their playoff push as they kind of attack the second half of the season? Oh, Vancouver has always been missing sort of that go-to guy to yeah. get them goals. They've tried several different... Um, iterations of people that could try and, and be that guy. It just hasn't happened. Um, they moved another Jamaican, Darren Maddox, who was supposed to be that guy, down to Portland at, at, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, now they're hoping they've got that guy. You know, they're right on top in that last spot in the mm -hmm. playoffs, but they've got uh, Portland and San Jose just behind them, nipping at their heels. So I think it's a case of ambition on one side for Vancouver and a bit of uh, realism uh, uh, from my Houston team, I think. You know, they realize maybe this season is a bit of a wash. I think it's going to be tough for them to get into the playoffs. Uh -huh. And so they're trying to set themselves up to go forward. So I think they're going to, it's going to be tough to lose Giles because mm -hmm. such a talented player. Yeah. But I think this is one for the future. All right. Um, so the big news that came down last week was uh, Siggy Schmidt out in Seattle. Um, I know you had a chance to talk to Case Keller about this, but what were, what were your initial reactions to this news? It's one of those things that you hear about, rumblings for a while, you know, the expectations are so high there. And talking to Casey Keller, it just became, it seemed like there was a bit of dysfunction maybe going around the team. Mm -hmm. um, and look, he said nothing but respect to Siggy. I think everybody in the league feels that way, but maybe a time for a change. Um, it was still a little bit of a surprise just because he's been there from the beginning mm -hmm. and he's built this club up from the ground, you know, and built these expectations. Now he suffers from them because he wasn't able to quite reach them. 
um, transition year. Now Schmetz is going to be the guy in charge. We'll mm -hmm. see if they give him a run. Um, disappointing late goal given up. Um, they it felt like they get drew against the Galaxy, but yeah. it felt like a loss. Um, but so so what what's the positive takeaway for the Sounders from from that game? Because it looked like they had the three points all all locked up, and then they walk away with one. Um, are there positives? I don't think so. Boy, no. I mean, the, oh, I will say, okay, there was one big positive. That's Ladero came in. Yeah. And he's the Uruguayan playmaker. Uh, he was fantastic. Really mm -hmm. connected well with Jordan Morris. Uh, Jordan missed a couple uh, easy chances that he would normally put away. Um, you know, a couple give credit to Yellow Van Dam. He makes a good goal line save. But um, you see those two having a little bit of a connection. He could be a really big pickup for them. I, I still think it's a tall task for them to get into the playoffs. And disappointing, I, I, I don't believe in taking away positives from a draw than when you had the lead late. Yeah. But if you look at the way they played, they played much better with him involved. All right, well, back to the action with so many games. We had some incredible plays, and let's share some of our favorites, Kaylin. Um, I'm going to start in Kansas City, where SKC picked up the 1-0 win over Portland. But it could have been much worse if it hadn't been for my guy, my cricket partner. Jake Gleason, who had, I think he had five saves on the day. Unbelievable one where it looked like he like hyperextended his back. I don't know how he got his hand that far back to, to stop hey, the ball from going again? in. You, it was like, okay? look at this. It was okay. like, I wow. need some yoga moves. Um, oh, that hurt actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was uh, he was outstanding. I thought he he played really, really well. Disappointing result. Not good enough to stop the answer though. No. Jacob Peterson. Oh, golly. Uh, teams need, this is with all due respect, because um, I felt like I was one, but a role player like Jacob Peterson to step up at, at those times and get hot through a stretch in the summer. Mm -hmm. He's done that. I mean, he, he hit the upper corner the last week and then now this one, he, you know, he's just a really smart player. He's yeah. very versatile. He can do a lot of different things on the field. He, he was big. Mm -hmm. But my favorite play uh -huh. Let's hear it. of last week was Xiao Plata. I, I, I get excited anytime okay. I talk about this guy just because he's like, he's so much fun to watch. Yeah. He's got some sizzle to him. Uh, I think Kyle Beckerman was telling you. Kyle he was Beckerman upset. was not very happy that uh, Plata was left out of the All Star game. He was really. Did he offer up his spot? No, he did not. He did? Okay. Of course not. Just checking. Why did he do that? Uh, no, it would have been fun to see him involved just because he can do the spectacular. You see that play? Mm -hmm. He bounces it off the guy, comes around. The second he hit, you know, he, he starts to swing. You know, it's going to that top quarter. It takes something special to beat Andre Blake. He oh, did yeah. it. Uh, that was probably my favorite moment of last week. One of the best goals I've seen. One this of the season. best goals. Can we talk about Jovinko's goal? that didn't actually technically go to him. I think it went to, to Endo. To Endo yeah. but that, that what are you was, talking about? That's that Endo's goal. That was hilarious. Did you see the reaction? Yeah. It was hysterical. But Joe Vinko was like, dude, it's fine. <laughs> no, but the way Endo was able to pick out that back corner, like he just he gently just, caressed he just kinda, it off it just, his back. It was and just perfect. Like, look, called it, I think it he called magic. a shot ahead of time. It was magical. That was nice. It was magical. Almost that as beautiful as Josie's though. just shot off the guy's ankle. Uh, no, it's get, I don't. When you're coming off injury, uh -huh. and he's he's coming off new off injury, of course. Yeah. Everybody knows Josie's been out, but to be able to just get a, a sort of a cheap late one like that is really big. Just to see the ball hit the back of the net, get a little confidence. You could see Jovinko came over and celebrated, was pumped up that Josie got it. <laughs> They've got a little uh, momentum now. This team. They've got some energy going. I really think they're the team to watch in the they're East gonna that's going to make, make a, push? a push up the table. I like it. I like it. Here we go. Our favorite moments from All-Star Week, Kaylin. You ready? You ready yeah. to dish? Yeah, wait, are we going on the field or off the field? Uh, either, both, whatever. Uh, why don't you start us off? Okay, so my my favorite moment, I have, I have two that are like sticking out in my head. The first one was giving um, Kaka a donut. That happened. Oh really? It did. He That's didn't cool. actually eat the donut. He picked out the strawberry one. Very Wait, delicious. Isn't that kind choice. of disrespectful to like not eat the donut? Well, he yeah. keeps training, and I told him I would find him after the game and give him the donut. Um, I think he he got out of there. He pieced out pretty quickly. I think the cock could eat like twelve donuts and still be better. But I was so funny. So I had this like big thing of donuts, and I would tell everybody, all the other players, I was like, don't touch that one. Is that it's kind like of like sacred. a donut sacred. name drop? A like you bit. like put a flag in it and you're like, this is my boy, this Kaka's is Kaka's. Donut. Um He was like so that. lovely too. What a nice guy. Um, didn't eat the donut, but I forgive him. Okay. Second favorite moment, got to talk to Flo Rida before the <laughs> concert, sat down with him for an interview. What do you call him? Flo. He Flo. told me to call him Flo. Gave me, gave me like the kiss, the double kiss on the cheek. Is he like French? We're Flor in, I don't Floridian? know. He's Florida. Um, he can do whatever he wants. But yeah, he he posted a pic on his Instagram of us two sitting there together. Really? And yeah, I felt I felt pretty special, guys. That's pretty cool. Yes. Um, did you get to introduce him on stage? No? Here we go. Because I think mm -hmm. I did. 
I'm pretty sure. Kalen with the mic drop. He needs no introduction. You hear him on the clubs, the radio, everywhere. And I got nothing else to say. Flow right up. Totally nailed it. What boots, else? Boots. I was wearing boots with the fur. Boots with the Forgot fur. Forgot my apple bottom jeans at the crib. That's a shame. But uh, that's a shame. Yeah, that was fun. The only other moment that I really liked. Well, let's. I was gonna say Kyle Aaron losing to an eight-year-old in FIFA because that did happen. That Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I saw a little AT&T booth, and I was he was playing with Canada, playing with himself, uh -huh. and he lost to Messi. Oh. This kid was eight years old. But Kyle, work on your FIFA game. School. Um, on the field. Huh. I really liked seeing um, some of the Dallas guys. Mm -hmm. Kellen Acosta played 60 minutes. Uh, I was I was glad to see Dom really gave him a run because mm -hmm. I think an experience like that for a young, promising player, especially a guy we want to see play more, or I do at least, uh, with the U.S. Men's National Team. Uh, seeing him play against Arsenal was really uh, encouraging, to, I think valuable. And then um, Mario Diaz. I hadn't seen him up close and in person. and. Seeing his kind of like stop start, he could like dribble his way out of a yeah. phone booth. I think that's a, uh, like a, a sort of a saying. Uh -huh. I picked that one up. I like yeah. it. That I met good. some British guys over there during the week. Oh, no. Um, Pick up But yeah, those, the two thing. Dallas guys were really fun to watch for me. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so right now we are going to take a question from our Facebook Live that we did earlier today, our little pre-production meeting. And uh, let's see who we got here. We've got Mike Newell. Hi, Mike. Mike wants to know what we think about TFC's young players, Chapman. Hamilton, Endo, et cetera, Kaylin. I think that's the model. You yeah. Know, I think that you want to have um, some experienced players. You've got your DPs that mm -hmm. are going to be, you know, the guys you're going to lean on um, throughout the season. But you can't win now in MLS without young players who are talented, whether it's homegrown or otherwise. Um, Chapman's a guy that actually Stuart Holden was talking to me about after the homegrown game. Him and Landon coached him yeah. um, in the match and said that he was a player that he really liked. Mm -hmm. I, I liked watching him up close and personal. The, the homegrown game, the Chipotle homegrown game was really cool to see. Um, man, another episode yeah. in the books. Um, it's great to be back in New York. Had a kind of crazy few months really. Wait, can with I Copa. give a couple of shout outs though? Yeah. So I want to give a shout out to Jason Kreiss, um, back first win yep. with Orlando City and his whole staff. Yep. Uh, big win. Kyle Laren with an unbelievable goal in that one. Kyle hits uh, off the left foot, right off the bounce. And then, you know, there, there's another moment in that game where he juggles it over Kellen Rowe's head. Then he knocks it for a little one two, finds Breck in between, like playmaking. Uh -huh. He looked like a Ka there. Um, that, that was a big one. And then I've got two other shout outs. Okay, give uh, your shout outs. Jim Hardy, who I met Kay. post game. Okay. Um, I was at, that was a cool, I had a little red MLS solo cup that was kind of fun at the Aww. after party. But he's the coach of the Kensington uh, Soccer Club, runs that. It's like one of the toughest areas in Philadelphia. Cool. Um, and he's doing a lot in the community. He was honored by MLS Works, um, deservedly so. Pretty Very awesome nice. to see people out doing cool stuff, getting honored at the All Star game too. You the real All Star, you the real MVP, Jim. Uh, Alan Gordon, also the Avaya security guard. Oh, yeah. Uh, he you sent me a Twitter pic of him as a little dude. He doesn't yep. look like that anymore. He's a big dude. Big like, guy. He, you do not want to mess with him with security. Uh -huh. But he helped me out a couple times, hooked me up with a little bit of uh, Aww, access. Good man. And, yeah. and he's a big fan. Loves the show. Gave a lot of compliments to you. Um, I have a shout out. Yep. Chris Lopez, who I met at the All Star game, also a big, big fan of the show. Okay. Um, took a selfie with him. Cool. Um, posted it. He was real excited. But he selfie told, or didn't told me, happen. Told me to tell you to say hello. Okay. So hello from Chris Lopez. Thanks for watching. Hope you're yeah. watching again. Um, yeah, that's it, man. That's cool. Let's, yeah, let's it's cool to go around and week. actually like see people, meet people. It was fun. Was fun for that. It was a really, really fun week. I am. I have to say, I'm glad to kind of be back in New York for a little bit. Yeah. Just kind of travel bug. Um, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Remember, Kayla and I are going to do some previews later this week. So stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com. We will see you soon. Florida. Florida.